This video is kindly sponsored by MPB. So you all know that I recently did a trip to Antarctica and it was fantastic. A completely different type and style of photography for me. And I learned a lot while I was there. And I also noticed a few things about my own work and how other photographers approach their work as well. I noticed how much photographers tend to play down or put down their work. And I realized that I do this too. I'm sure you all know what imposter syndrome is. I'm not the first person to talk about it, nor will I be the last person, but it's something that all photographers and artists go through at some point in their creative journey. We are using the Nikon D750 today for those who were worried that it was lost. It is not still in my camera bag. Still love it. I'm quite curious by and drawn to this falling tree in front of me and more specifically the idea of photographing it in the wrong angles and by that I mean you would sort of naturally gravitate to a front facing view where you could see these roots coming out and lifting out of the ground but instead we are viewing this tree from behind. It almost feels as though the rest of the forest is creating sort of a barricade around it because there's so many other trees and plants and bushes and foliage surrounding it that I almost feel as though I'm looking through a window trying to look past all of these trees in front of me to a moment that is slowly happening over time and this tree could realistically fall over at any point. Already I am distracted by these trees behind. This is not going to be the best composition for this tree but this is our starting base and then what we're going to do is we're going to build up a few images, we're going to get closer, we're going to walk around the sides, the front of it, build up a few images, see what works and what doesn't. In order to eliminate any background distractions, all of these crazy trees and God knows what else is going on over here, I think what I'm going to do is crop in a bit tighter and focus more specifically on the base of this tree and this great big mound of mossy earth that has been lifted. And I think some angles from both sides of this tree is going to work really, really well. I am noticing on my LCD screen that my yellows and greens are coming out quite washed out and we also have some light that is reflecting off the tree trunk. Everything is wet because it's been raining so it is a pretty damp and a, a bit of a miserable day. So I have a polarizing filter on just to take those highlights down a little bit and bring back some of that vibrant green color of this wonderful moss. This is the Firecrest holder kit by Format High Tech, and this is a magnetic polarizing filter. I'm going to go ahead and take a few different images here at some different angles, so let me know which ones you prefer in the comments section down below. Now you all know what I mean by self-doubt, the is this image good enough? Comparing yourself to other photographers and the need for validation. 
A certain amount of self-doubt can be healthy as it can stimulate creativity, imagination and improvement. So you can use it as a strength rather than a weakness, but too much of it. And then you rob the, yourself of the fun of photography. And that's why we do this, the enjoyment of it. And even after those bad days where the weather's terrible, we don't come away with an image, we still go out again regardless because that is what we love doing. Also, have you seen my camera and my tripod? It seems to have gone missing. It's probably those pesky forest gremlins. <sighs> Better go find it. There is something called the Danning Kruger effect, which is a study on perceived ability versus actual ability. And every photographer at some point will go through this one stage. Generally, that happens at the beginning of your journey where you are convinced that you are an amazing photographer and that you know everything about photography. And when you step out of that stage and onto the next, you then get this realization that my images are not that great and I don't know everything. In fact, I'm lacking in certain areas or skills. Your confidence nosedives, but your ability actually increases because you then start making conscious steps in learning about photography and improving your photography. I believe Erin Babnik actually mentioned this in her presentation in Antarctica, which is probably why it's in my brain. And uh, she did a presentation on the seven virtues of landscape photography, which was fantastic. I highly recommend you go and check her work out. You can also find some of her presentations online, I believe. Aha, uh -huh. gotcha, yes. Interestingly, the forest gremlins have brought me to my checkpoint in this section of forest. I have walked through here countless times and it's so, so easy to get lost because there's no order. It's messy, it's cramped. And when I hit this spot here, I know exactly where I am <laughs> in relation to other trails. And this spot sticks in my mind because it has structure in comparison to everything else around it. Notice how these trees are almost in a perfect line running down the side of this pathway. Well, I have found an angle and a composition that I like. We're quite low down, but not too low so that, so that we lose this path completely. And we've got some twigs in the foreground here is a bit of foreground interest close to the camera, which I quite like. The only disappointing thing with this shot right now is the light. There is no light. It is overcast, it's boring, it's dull. Our weather this week is literally this, it's very vanilla and um, we could really do with some light coming through these trees. And I think it would cast some really interesting shadows in the dips in the ground and really exaggerate the fact that the ground is not even. But reality of photography, this is what we have to deal with. And so we're gonna take this shot and I'm gonna review it, review the composition, review the angle when I get back home and come back another time to improve on it or um, get it in the preferred conditions. <laughs> Let's have a change of scenery. Oh, I work on my landings. We are going to go and find some highland cows. Now, apparently there are some on this nature reserve. I have never found them. They always seem to escape me. 
but I feel like today is the day. Today is the day. It was very interesting on the Antarctica trip because everyone took away some new nugget of information. Even the pros were learning things from others and we were all able to joke about our photography fails, which I think is important because we only see people's successes and not their embarrassing moments. The main thing that I took away, or a big reminder at least, because I knew this, I just wasn't applying it to my photography efficiently, is not to compare my photography to other people's work. There's a quote from, I think, Theodore Roosevelt, Roosevelt, something like that, uh, where he says that comparison is the thief of joy. And it's absolutely true. The moment you get stuck into comparing your work with somebody else's, you just get so down on yourself and it just seems to suck the life out of photography. And what we all have to remember is that we're all on different photographic journeys and success for me is going to be very different to success to another photographer because we all have different visions and ideas and inspirations and motivations and goals. Success for my photography this year is all about embracing change, pushing the boundaries of my work, stepping outside my comfort zone and... Got Highland Cows on the move. <laughs> I've lost it. <laughs> and uh, seeking growth in my photography, no matter how big or small that growth is. If I can achieve that, then I'll be very, very happy. So what does success look like to you? Do you have any photography goals this year? And uh, what is it that you're looking to work on or improve on in your work? Let me know in the comment section down below. I'm gonna move because these Highland cows are moving towards me. So uh, we're gonna get going. But before we leave, a quick thank you from today's sponsor. I can't concentrate. <laughs> MPB is run by creatives for creatives where you can trade in, sell and buy used photo and video kit. Perhaps you have some old gear lying around that you don't need anymore that you can earn some money from and pass on to another artist or photographer that could benefit from it. Or perhaps you want to take your videography or photography to the next level and a new piece of equipment would help you do that. If you're unsure about buying used kit, camera bodies, lenses, MPB test everything and then grade it from like new to well used so you know exactly what you're getting. I'm a big believer in buying a used kit where possible. Half of my gear is used, my Nikon D750, my Nikon D850. There's no point in buying new when there's plenty of extremely good cameras that are in full working condition out there that are cheaper as well, ready to be picked up and used. I'm gonna leave the link for MPB down in the comments section uh, description down below <laughs> if you want to go and check them out. I can see it. Your hand, your mouse is hovering over the X button, ready to go bloop, goodbye. So I just wanna say very quickly, thank you so much for watching. I am on my way back to the car. It's taking me forever. I took the scenic route instead of actually taking proper pathways. I was all the way in there. Don't, don't recommend it. But thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time for, I believe we're going to do some waterfall photography. Okay, now you can exit. Bye. <laughs>